Let's look at the wave equation on a semi-infinite domain. So that means we're just taking x to have only positive values right now. Um, we'll take as our boundary condition uh, homogeneous Dirichlet. So we'll fix the value of u to be equal to 0. So physically, this means that at x equals 0 at the origin, uh, we're fixing the string in the equilibrium position so that it can't move up or down out of equilibrium. And so this is the domain that we're looking at right now. OK, so let's see. Um, we know from studying the wave equation that the solution to this thing is going to look like uh, something moving to the right and something moving to the left. And with, with the uh, IACs that were given right here, we can work out that um, from, from D'Alembert's formula, that this is going to be a one half of uh, u naught x minus 2c times the integral from 0 to x of v naught. And that our leftward moving um, signal is going to come half of it from the displacement. And uh, it's, well, it's going to take half the displacement, and it's also going to take uh, half of the initial velocity. All right. Um, now it's important to note that since we're doing this uh, on the on the semi-infinite domain, um, these. Uh, the arbitrary functions, capital F and G, these are uh, determined by the initial conditions only for x positive. Whoops. Um <coughs> okay, so that means that they uh, we, we don't know what they are and we don't care what they are for um, x negative until it turns out actually um, we do care what they are for negative values of x because so g of x plus c t, this guy uh, only is depends on Um, positive values of the argument uh, because we're looking at where uh, x is positive and t is positive and c is also given to be positive. Um, so, uh, and, and remember this, this is actually a function of a single variable. Uh, we're just feeding it this single variable in this uh, complex form x plus ct. Um, but if you're looking at g, just the function g, where do its arguments live? Well, we only care about the negative ones. But if we look at um, x minus ct, well, now if x is less than ct, it's possible for the argument to be negative. So, so this guy depends on uh, negative values of the argument. OK, so we actually do care about um, what's going on with uh, f of a negative number. All right, so here's what the domain looks like. And we're totally fine um, as long as we're down here. Everything is, is legitimate. Up here, however, things are more questionable. So for x greater than ct, the string doesn't know about the boundary yet.
The idea is that the uh, information, that is the, the signal, is propagated only at the finite speed c. Um, <coughs> and for points that are in this part of the domain, they, um, the signal is not propagated far enough to the boundary for boundary effects to affect anything. So we're looking at a point like this one right here. In this case, since this is, this is the line uh, x equals ct, so this is a point where x is bigger than ct. And the uh, domain of uh, influence for this region is over here. It's, it's all um, positive values of the argument. However, um, if ct is bigger than x, the signal uh, has reached the boundary. Um, <coughs> and then you can wonder about boundary effects. Ah. So what boundary effects occur? So now we're looking at a point like this one where x is less than ct. This diagonal is still the line x equals ct. And then, uh, so, so these curves here, these are the characteristic curves where g is constant. And then this is a characteristic curve where f is constant. So in this region, um, you can see the, the signal has had time to propagate to the boundary and then bounce or do something, reflect, refract, uh, come off anyway. So there's some sort of boundary effects occur right here. OK, and then. You can see also, oh, well, shoot. I sort of wrote that exactly in the wrong place. Let me move it a little bit. Ah. There we go. Um, <coughs> you, can, you can also see that uh, this, this depends now, or the, uh, the value of what's, what's going on um, at this location that we're interested in can be traced back to points over here where the argument is negative. OK. So how to understand all this? All right, well, let's take a look at the boundary conditions. Uh, so that uh, it's supposed to be equal to 0 at the boundary. And so if we evaluate our generic um, uh, f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct when x is equal to 0, then we have f of minus ct uh, whoops, plus g of uh, positive ct being equal to 0. And this is going to be true for all t positive. And that tells us that um, f is equal to minus g of negative z for um, whenever the argument is a positive number. So this means that a, um, a right moving wave um, reflected by the boundary is going to be the um, 
negative of a left moving wave. All right. So, uh, so what we see is that in this case, uh, with this the boundary conditions the way that we've chosen them. Um, <coughs> The boundary condition causes the wave to invert um, when it bounces off the boundary. OK, so that's fine. We can solve for this guy using uh, D'Alembert's formula. And what we'll do is we'll we'll take this um, this idea right here to heart and enforce that condition um, by taking the the odd extensions of these functions. So we'll take f to be uh, u naught for x positive, and for negative values of x, minus x will be a positive value. And so that's how we use, uh, that's how we'll define u, except we want it to be the negative of that. So we throw a negative sign out front. And we do the same thing for g. And so these are called the odd extension. So this is the odd extension of, of u naught and v naught. From the positive semi-infinite domain to the entire real line. OK. Uh, and this has the added benefit of reducing the problem to something we already know how to solve, which is namely the one that's on the entire real line instead of the, the semi-infinite domain. So um, for uh, x bigger than ct, the way it's stated above is correct. For x less than ct, um, we're going to use instead the formula for u given by 1 half. And then this part is going to be uh, negated. Oh, and so is this part. So this is um, uh, ct minus x instead of the x minus ct. And also, uh, the other part, upon substitution, can be rewritten like this. And so if you want to know what uh, the solutions look like, here's a picture of um, the, the curve reflecting off the boundary. So I, I started with uh, one of those Cauchy distributions. So this is uh, like what it looks like a shifted form of 1 over 1 plus x squared. Wow, OK, that was way too thin. Let's see. How about this? There we go. OK, so this guy is uh, 1 over 1 plus x squared. It's actually x minus something or other squared to shift it over to the right. And then you can see, uh, if you look over here, what's going on at the boundary, uh, as, it, as it reflects, it comes back and it's inverted. 